not just a retired admiral, but formerly the president of the Berkeley County Commission when it was a commission, and it is a commission again. It, it has, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Because council was very confusing. It was confusing, but we had no choice. At the time, we had to change the name to something besides a commission, and uh, there were a lot of suggestions na- uh, mentioned. I'll bet there was. But the, uh, <laughs> but the least confusing was council. Uh, but, uh, but that, you're right, uh, it was a great move being, able, being allowed to change it back to commission. I know it helps me. <laughs> it helps everybody. That's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. Our guest in this segment is the superintendent of schools, Ron Stevens, who's been gracious with his time on many occasions during the course of this school year. We hope that uh, continues. And uh, not that I'm turning the screws and putting pressure on him or anything like that, but why not? But Ron, we will. Good morning. We will. Good morning. <laughs> good Thanks morning. to Elaine Bobo for setting uh, this up for us here. Ron, I'm not sure how much of Dale Lee's segment that you just heard uh, while you were uh, arriving and, and then waiting to, to come in or not, but... Uh, you tell me, uh, in the in the classroom, in the in the school building, uh, around the offices, is there much concern about some of the issues Dale is addressing regarding teachers with health insurance premiums and salaries and such? Well, um, unfortunately, I I just arrived. Was at a uh, meeting this morning at a school, um, and only got was able to catch the tail end of of the conversation with uh, with you and Mr. Lee. Um, but I do know that there was a, a regional PEI meeting last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that there were about uh, 50, 40 to 50 uh, attendees. Um, I don't know the format. I was not able to attend the meeting myself. Um, but I, I, I have been told that some of the concerns were uh, um, about um, the uh, increases in the health insurance, in premium, the health yeah. insurance premiums um, and and the uh, the meeting lasted last night about an hour. Uh, like I said, it was a regional meeting. It wasn't just Berkeley County; it was Morgan Jefferson County employees as well. So, what about in the in the four walls of the Berkeley County school system? Is this? I know everybody's busy during their day doing the things that need done, but is it something that uh, creeps to the surface in conversations about salaries and insurance premiums? I I think always. Uh, you know the. Uh, Everybody is uh, scared of the unknown, including me. And uh, you know, because I like to know what's coming, I like to have a plan. Um, you know, and I, I think that this is one of those things that came in, and um, our our employees just don't have a, a a full grasp of of everything about it. And there's questions about it, and the and the ones that are getting some answers to it, they're they're raising more questions. So, um, you know, it's it's one of those things. The, it's an expense that um, ha- has a lot of people concerned. Are they going to be able to afford it? And how much is how much of a bite is that going to take out of their pocketbook? That coupled with the fact to what uh, Dale mentioned earlier that West Virginia's teachers have now slid into the fiftieth of all the fifty states. Mm-hmm. Uh, that. And we ask a lot for them, and we've had previous uh, discussion with you about the discipline problems, the respect problems, the uh, uh, school security, there's a whole litany of things that lay on their shoulders they're concerned about. And then when you realize that you're 50th of 50 states as far right. as reimbursement salaries, uh, that's a that's a pretty heavy load to carry. Well, it, it is a heavy load, and, uh, you know, I tell a lot of people perception is reality out there. So, you know, you you've got to uh, get a handle on on what what is actually happening and what people think is happening. And um, in this particular case, you're right. Um, it is somebody has to be fiftieth, but why us is 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 what I say. Why us? And it should not be why us. It, uh, right. Excuse me. It should not be us. So, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, a question I asked uh, Dale was he did the report uh, and then he submitted the State Board of Education and the legislators, uh, and he came back the answer that I anticipated that there's not a lot of communication between the teachers' union and the uh, at least the legislators. Let me rephrase that question. Uh, from the administration perspective, how much communication, how much interrelationship do you have with the unions? Um, or is it, are the silos? Well, personally, uh, I meet monthly with our association reps. Um, you know, so there is an open dialogue. There's an opportunity for an open dialogue. Uh, we, we discuss a number of issues, 
But primarily the issues that we discuss are Berkeley County issues. And, and you know, on a monthly basis, they'll bring up an item. We'll try to deal with it. Um, or sometimes it's just about being heard. Um, you know, at the state level, there, there are different concerns. There are different concerns in every district. So um, I have not – this is the first time that I've actually met Mr. Lee in person. So. Okay. Well, you're making a good point. There's a uh, uh, there's two perspectives. There's the uh, the statewide perspective and the local perspective, and you do meet with the with the representatives on a monthly basis. Mm-hmm. Are they? Would you consider them to be a productive meeting, Ron, or something that you meet just because for appearances? I I, I think they're very productive, and I think if you if you talk to the the representatives that are that are in attendance, um, they bring. Uh, they they submit questions in advance. We put together an agenda. It's very organized. We um, uh, I try to provide them with rationale for decisions, why decisions were made. If they have questions, you know, we we try to um, come up with recommendations at these meetings. I think they're very productive um, for us. Again, I'm, I'm I'm not involved at that level, to state level or across the state, though. From from addressing a problem and coming up with a solution uh are you finding a lot of the questions a lot of the concerns are uh are not possible to meaningfully address i'm thinking about some of the things we keep coming back uh with discipline for example being a cultural issue being a uh with the with the parents at home that's something you cannot address but is there but something needs to be looked at uh and there are probably agencies that can look at this in more detail is that the sort of questions that you come to grips with yes yes um we we discuss discipline. We discuss the uh, new discipline policy, the the committee that that um, we have put together to to put together a um, our discipline plan for for the county. Um, but that's just a piece of it. We, we you know we're discussing coverage, um, transportation, um, teacher shortages, shortages of of in other positions. Um, and trying to trying to come up with a plan to assist in all of that. It, it involves all of our departments attend. We have representatives from our HR department, our pupil services department, department, our teaching and learning department, uh, transportation, special education. I mean, it's 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 a much larger thing for you know. I, I know that discipline is a hot topic. Yeah. Uh, and you know, no, I was using that for an example. About, no, yeah, I, I agree, example, yeah. and yeah. and it is always one of the topics. Yeah. But it is it is one of the topics that we discuss. Okay. Recently, a couple so months ago, we got this uh, SAT report, and mm-hmm. Berkeley County, I think three areas that were identified. Uh, Jefferson, I believe, had two. Morgan had one. Uh, and I've forgotten exactly what the areas were, uh, but how much attention do you give to this this type of report, and what action do you take to try to address it? Well, I, I think you're talking about a couple of couple of things, so I'll try to separate those. First, first you mentioned SAT. Yes. Um, you know, and I I think it's important to recognize that you know the state of West Virginia's SAT scores um, are, you know. The, the numbers uh, indicate that we're down a little bit. Um, down? I'm not sure you say a little bit. Uh, well, for the SAT. Yeah. Okay. For the SAT yeah. test is what we're talking about um, in comparison with other states. At the same time, uh, you know, I, I, I want to remind everybody we need to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. And West Virginia is testing a larger number of students that are not necessarily college going. If you think back when you took the SAT, you took the SAT, if you took the SAT, uh, I don't know, was it around when you were? No, it was not, no. I say that with a smile. I know. And I, <laughs> I know and we're I, on the radio, and, Bill. And, and I, <laughs> it was for me. Yeah, that's right. And, I, and I'm responding. Of course, respond- I'm much younger than Bill. Yeah, I don't wanna, and I'm responding with a grimace. I don't, <laughs> don't want to get off topic, but, you know, the, the point is um, it was designed um, as a standard for basically college entry, yes. higher level higher level thinking and um you know right now we're using it as as a measure as a measurement for all students so we have a number of students that are taking the sat that um 
would not necessarily be college going rate. They would not necessarily be uh, students that are, you know, typically that you would think of would take an SAT. In, and in many states, they don't. Are they taking so it because it's mandated by Berkeley County Schools? That is the state's uh, mandated test. I see. For, the SAT is the state yes, mandated test. Yes. So, so, so we have aligned with the SAT uh, for, for students to take that. We have a number of students that take that. Um, and the scores, um, I'm just saying, we, we have a, a larger group of students that would take that. The pool of students that take it, the, the averages don't quite measure out. So where we rank in that doesn't take into consideration the fact that these other states don't have more students uh, taking it. So that's a, that's, that's, a, that's a difficult comparison it, to make. And it's an excellent point that you're making, a point that I've not heard. I, I'm not trying to make yeah. an excuse about it. We, yeah. do, we need to improve, just like you said. But at the same time, um, but how West, we compare, it's very difficult yeah. to make that. So West Virginia is using this, the SAT, for a different purpose than what some of the other states are. Yes, and, and a number of counties in West Virginia um, are testing even more students and Berkeley County tests a large number uh, so we're submitting a larger ooh, I'm sorry we're, we're submitting a larger number of students uh, SAT tests uh, unlike some of the other states uh, it's just difficult comparison yeah, uh, points well taken but it does give you guidance on what you need to work toward correct yeah. yes and, yes. and was, our goal is to is to raise our college going rate yeah. to raise those SAT scores for those students that do need it for for entry and um, you know I, th I think that we are I think we're achieving some of those goals but it's very difficult to yeah. to pinpoint uh, and and Ron pardon me I intentionally try to simplify very very complex issues mm -hmm. and I realize they're much more complex than the than my question or the answer you give right. me or would you say but of these deficiencies in SAT do you see a pattern of one thing that contributes more than others uh, uh, to the lower SAT scores to the lower so, SAT such as truancy okay so to separate as I said in the beginning you're talking about kind of a couple different yes, things uh -huh. we, the indicator that you're talking about that um, you know when you mentioned Morgan Berkeley and Jefferson County and and that color map that was in the in the uh, paper that, that brought attention to to the state's counties where everybody looked uh, and who was deficient in what there's there's multiple indicators there they're not all about the SAT and that's that's kind of the point that I want to bring out one of the pieces of that deals with the SAT but a number of those are indicated by cells that are, are tested, um, special education cells, um, different grade levels, attendance, disciplinary data. There, there's a whole variety of things that, that play into that color map. And, and to just look at it and to say, well, look at all these different colors and wow, we're red. We really need to understand why we're red and what, what causes that or why we're orange and what causes that. I suspect if you don't plan on going to college, the amount of attention to detail you pay to an SAT test is pretty low. Well, and the SAT is just at the high school level. You know, a large portion of this is is not inclusive of the right. high school level. So the SAT is yeah. not what we're talking about for third grade achievement mm -hmm. and fourth grade achievement and fifth grade achievement. Now, so. speaking of not high school, mm -hmm. there's a post on our Facebook comment section about North Middle School and the possibility of the state taking over North Middle. What's going on over there, Ron? Um, not sure where that comment is. That that is a, a con that is basically one of the down the road um, ramifications if you are a CSI school and you don't make proper growth. CSI is C continuous school improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there are two schools in Berkeley County that have been noted, uh, Winchester Avenue, North Middle School. They receive uh, intervention from the uh, State Department of Education. They have um, uh, liaisons assigned from the state. We have a team of people here. Uh, at our most recent board meeting, we gave a, a report about the CSI schools um, and the uh, interventions that are taking place. There's a, there's a pool of money that is available across the state to schools that are designated as, uh, in in such a manner and then with members from the state 
approving, uh, a team makes recommendations. These are things that we can do to address it. Uh, so across the state, um, schools have different needs. Some schools will um, look for programs. Some schools will look for personnel. Um, and there's a variety of things in between. What is, what is happening at those two schools in particular? A, a combination of those things. Um, it, it was a, it's, a, it's a very long report. From, so for me to sit here uh, and, and summarize the whole thing would be, would be quite challenging. But um, it, there's information available on our website, on the state's website, about what CSI is and, and what interventions can be made available. Um, and it, it's a continual process. You have a period of time to, once you're designated because of attendance scores or, uh, or attendance rates, I mean, or achievement scores, um, then you're considered a CSI school for a period of time and then reevaluated at the end of that. So. And, and how was it revealed that those two schools were the schools that were in jeopardy? This is a relatively new process. It started a couple of years ago, um, and in the spring they were identified. Um, By what criteria, though? The, uh, the, the data that said. Bill was referring to, all the indicators. There's a, there's a, a pantheon list of indicators that are there, but it does include achievement. Mm -hmm. It does include attendance. It does include... Uh, all of the different cells that you're talking about. Um, you know, I know, for instance, uh, Winchester Avenue was um, designated based on uh, third grade uh, and attendance. Um, you know, and there's a very small group in that particular school. So we should be able, we're, we're hoping we're going to be able to give immediate attention and, and rectify that, but they will be monitored for uh, same period of time as North. Ron, this brings me back to a question that I've raised frequently over the last few weeks, few months, and that's the respective role of our various organizations. Mm -hmm. You mentioned State Board of Education. Yes. Does our local Board of Education get involved in all on this issue? The, the role of the local board is as a policymaker and overseer, and so the... Um, the team that is created in Berkeley County works co collaboratively with the Department of Education's team because the Department of Education is the team that laid out what these indicators are going to be. And their, their goal is to raise everybody's achievement and to meet the other indicators that are there. So um, they're involved more on a um, – if there's a policy that needs changed or addition uh, to approve a staff member or to address an issue, that's how they would be involved in it. Ron Stevens is our guest. He is the superintendent of schools in uh, Berkeley County, and it is uh, November. Uh, it is. It's hard to believe. Soon you guys will be taking a little bit of a break here. Well, <laughs> when you say you guys. Uh, you don't, but the, uh, the students do. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, um, you know, it's that time. It's uh, let's go to uh, fall seasons. I mean, we, we have a couple of uh, teams in Berkeley County competing at the state level um, today. Mm -hmm. Our um, volleyball teams is it today are today or do they play tomorrow? Our volleyball mm -hmm. teams uh, uh, play today, and then the championship is tomorrow. So. Um, yeah, I'm excited it, about that. Collins in the in the uh, newsroom there. Colin, you got your ears on over there. You, or you you know the volleyball schedule, and you, I think you've got to turn something off first before you get feedback or whatever. But you can go ahead and pull your mic up and whatever there if you know. While he's doing that, we've got you know we're wrapping up all the fall seasons, and we've got three football teams that are in the playoffs, and you know cross country teams and golf, and I mean just a whole whole variety of things. Tournament of bands. What do you got uh, there, Colin? Uh, I'm trying to pull it up for right now. I do know that it begins today, but I don't know off the top of my head what time our local teams play. Yeah, Musselman and Hedgesville in the volleyball tournament. Yes. Right. Yeah, I, I know that Musselman and Hedgesville play at different times, but if they win, they will play each other. Yes. For birth yeah. tomorrow they will in the play championship game. In the semifinals, so, that's right. correct. And then there's so. three of the four schools that made the football playoffs were out of Berkeley County. Yes. Martinsburg, Spring Mills, and Musselman. Yes. Uh, so we're having a, um, you know, wrapping up the fall season, but we're having a very good representation from the Eastern Panhandle. Are you uh, ready to do a superintendent shout out? I would love to do superintendent shout outs. We've um, got a variety of things that um, 
were taking place. So first of all, um, I, I want to give a shout out. We we mentioned this at our uh, board meeting the other night. Allison Reed was our fifth grade uh, ACE award winner. She's a caring uh, a caring educator. So she received the ACE award. Um, Allison Reed is a great fifth grade teacher at Eagle School. I want to give a shout out to her. We have a student at Spring Mills, Mason Garrett, who is our uh, National Merit semifinalist. Uh, fantastic in the classroom. We've got a, a number of things going on, but that's above and beyond. Our, uh, also, our Spring Mills FFA placed ninth nationally. Which nationally? Is, it, yes, nationally in a competition in animal judging. And Reagan Barrett, uh, who has addressed our board, very professional young lady. I've, I've spoken with her on numerous occasions. She plays second overall individually, which is fantastic uh, nationally. So I um, want to um, give kudos to Davida uh, Milander from uh, Spring Mills Middle School. She was named the new president president of the uh, Science Teachers Association, West Virginia Science Teachers Association. Again, doing great things in the classroom. Um do want to um, uh, announce that we're doing community outreach. Uh, central office, we, we've done some BCS 101 where you learn about Berkeley County Schools in the past. We're actually going to hold some sessions out in the community. It was the idea of our board to, to be able to do that. So each at the end of each quarter, we're, we're organizing that. And we're going to do our first one actually tonight at 530 at the Randy Smith Center mm -hmm. in Inwood. Um, the next one will be in uh, in January, and that will be covering the Martinsburg region. Veterans Day is Saturday, but we will observe it on Friday, uh, so there'll be no school, and that is part of what you were alluding to. No mm -hmm. school uh, this Friday, and we are coming up on American Education Week, which is next week. The following week is Thanksgiving week. Uh, this time of year always kind of rolls fast until we get through Christmas. These these next are few you shut weeks down the whole quickly. week for Thanksgiving, Ron? Uh, for students, yes. Yeah. All yes. Right, very good. Hey, uh, if, if there's, if the, is that the list? Yeah. You got another one? Uh, oh, what? No, I just want to say the last thing is I'm, I'm very excited. Berkeley County, uh, uh, Berkeley County Schools uh, is doing tremendous things, uh, working on large projects. We're, we're doing a lot of planning on those projects that deal with bond, bond issues. Bond and, issues. Uh, very good. You know, over the next few weeks, we'll be. Uh, bidding out items and uh, going to be a lot of growth in, yeah. in Berkeley County over the next uh, four years. So I'm excited about it. Well, whether whether we want it or not, or are ready for it or not, it's coming. It is coming. It's going to continue. You I guess correct. is probably the better way way to put it. So Ron, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, no problem, Ron. guys. Good Appreciate one. it. Good information. Yep. Superintendent of Schools Ron Stevens at 901.